What is up, YouTube family? Liam Murphy back today to recap the moves we care about in underdog fantasy, in fantasy football, that is, with free agency. Going to be ripping a big board draft for 200K up top. I am a host on this channel, a three time NFL best ball champion. Let's get it, fam. All right, to kick things off today, I'm going to be going all the way back to the start of free agency. Going to try to hit on most moves we care about, most of the changes we've seen so far. Give you a little color commentary on them with heavy emphasis on the offensive side, unless the defensive player is, you know, transcendent. So, hope I'm getting all of them here, but... Let's just start with uh, Michael Pittman, franchise tagged by the Colts. No surprise there. Um, you know, Pittman could have some more spike weeks with Richardson at the helm, but certainly we'll probably see less volume, maybe less touchdowns uh, compared to with Minshew. Zach Ertz signs a $5 million deal with the Commanders. That one has some sneaky appeal, you know, I like Ertz on a tight end premium website, um, especially depending on which rookie they take at number two there. Um, Mitch Morse was signed to the Jaguars to play center. And why that's meaningful is Mitch Morse was first the center with Patrick Mahomes. Then he was the center with Josh Allen with the Bills. Um, he got cut by the Bills because he was just too expensive. And the Jaguars was a team that a lot of people were excited about last year, me included, in their passing game. And I was surprised at just how bad their O-line was to hold them back. So they signed, you know, they traded and then signed a deal for Ezra Cleveland to play guard. They got Mitch Morrison there. So the Jaguars O-line is going to be upgraded, which should just be a boost to the offense as a whole. Um. Moving on here, we got Russell Wilson with the Steelers is what it is. I think that's just a bridge situation. Um, you know, you got Arthur Smith there being OC, not our favorite OC in the world. He, um, they got Deontay Johnson out of there. They traded Deontay Johnson to the Panthers, which, I mean, it seems like they just didn't want to pay Johnson. You know, of course, the jokes write themselves about, Arthur Smith never never wanting a wide receiver too. But I really like that trade for the Panthers. They traded one of their corners and like a sixth for Johnson and a seventh or something like that. Um, and that's great. I mean, Johnson could see a ton of targets with Bryce Young. Not impossible. Bryce Young takes a leap with some more competent players. His wide receiver core, other than Adam Thielen, was just awful at getting open. So in a PPR website, um, Johnson has a lot of appeal, in my opinion, especially with Thielen another year older. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be chasing George Pickens up the board if he's quite expensive, but he, he should see, you know, some, some solid volume. What's up, dude? Top of the morning here. John Smith is a Dolphin. You know, him as a yard after catch guy, a little dump off option with Tyreek clearing space makes sense as a as a dark to mix in late, in my opinion. Um, Hunter Henry's back with the Patriots. We don't really know what the Patriots are going to do at this point in time. So he could see some default volume. He's a fine late round tight end to mix in. Um, Derek Henry is a Raven. And 
I think the season for Derrick Henry could go a lot of different ways. I'm expecting his price to be expensive in best ball. I think the Derrick Henry lovers will be the only kind of way the upside options with him. And in a good season, I think Derrick Henry could have 15 to 20 touchdowns where the Ravens move the ball. He punch it, you know, he steals a bunch of touchdowns at the goal line. He is still a explosive option on the perimeter compared to a Gus bus. So he could be getting some long touchdown runs as well. Um, especially with teams having to worry about Lamar. Uh, we don't really know what Keaton Mitchell's situation is as far as when he's returning um, in the season and if he'll even be able to. So, yeah, I quite like the signing. I think it's a good signing for the Ravens. Uh, Henry thrives when teams don't, you know, uh, stack the box, and that works with Lamar as well. But, I mean, the man is older, right? So if he's going to be steamed up to the second round or whatnot, that's probably too steep for me to have a heavy bag on. Jerry Judy traded to the Browns. I have personally faded Judy almost every year in fantasy football, and that has been rewarded handsomely. Um, only cost a fifth and a sixth, so I expect Judy to be in the mix with Elijah Moore for uh, one of the wide receiver spots there. You know, Amari Cooper still the alpha. David Njoku still ahead in pecking order, but it's a good sign. It's a good trade for the Browns. You know, you can never have too many wide receiver options, and rolling the dice on a guy like Judy, you know, doesn't doesn't seem too bad. But yeah, I'm not going to be a big buyer on Judy unless he's real cheap. Mac Jones is a Jaguar. It's a good trade for the Jags. Just having a competent backup quarterback. You know, he's a good backup, not a great starter. Mike Williams cut from the Chargers. Keenan Allen traded to the Bears for a fourth round pick. He was approached for a pay cut. And he said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking the pay cut. I had one of my best years last year. So, you know, first starting with the Bears. This is one of the best situations a rookie quarterback has walked into in a long time. You know, I would say the situation Mahomes walked into was pretty elite for a rookie where, yes, he didn't play his true rookie year, but all of a sudden he's throwing to Tyreek Hill. He's got Travis Kelsey in the mix. Caleb Williams is going to have an upgraded O-line. The defense is going to be very good for Chicago. They're investing in it the right way, in my opinion. They got a lot of cap space to burn. They got DJ Moore. They traded for Keenan Allen for fourth round pick, which, you know, is it an overspend? Probably, yes. At, at Keenan Allen's age, he's 32. However, you know what you're getting with Keenan. He's competent at the least. I still think they could go, you know, someone like uh, Adunzie with their with their second pick after after drafting Caleb. So, Really like the situation that Caleb is stepping into for the Bears. They also signed DeAndre Swift, who, you know, I don't know a ton about Caleb's game other than that I think he's going to be very good. But if he is a guy who hits the check down, Swift could be a good piece there. Don't really know. I'm assuming Khalil Herbert's out of there, but I don't I don't 100% know what's going on there. They got Roshan Johnson in the mix. Um, a bit of a hit probably to Cole Komet, but... For a rookie, you know, great situation. And I don't think it's impossible that Caleb throws for more yards than C.J. Stroud did, which was 4,100 yards. Baker Mayfield back with the Bucks. You know, these Florida teams, they don't have to pay sales tax to their players. So, you know, team friendly -ish deal there. Personally, if I was a Bucks fan, you're paying a guy like Baker. You're paying a guy like Kirk Cousins. In my opinion, you're not maximizing your chances to win a Super Bowl. And you would think the job of GMs is to simply give your team the best odds to win the Super Bowl, but that's not true. You got to fill the you got to fill the stadium, you got to give your uh, fan base some hope, you got to make free agents want to sign there. So, 
it makes sense for the Bucks. Bring Baker back. I still think it's a priority to get a rookie quarterback that they feel good about. You know, at least a project to take on. But, I mean, come on now. Baker, fine player. He had a great season. Good story. But it's just kind of settling. The, the nice thing about Baker's deal, the nice thing about Russell's deal is they're short bridges for the teams. Not a, not a huge deal. Um, where they can they can do a hard reset if they need to in a year or two. Kirk Cousins is a Falcon, an Atlanta Falcon, who hasn't seen those memes of Kirk with the chains. He, um, you know, I think this, I personally think this trade makes, or this, this signing makes sense for both sides. I think the Vikings realize that, hey, our roster's not good enough to uh, keep it with, Kirk, pay Kirk a crazy amount of money. Um, we're just it's not gonna be the best for us. We need to get younger at the position, get get younger as as a organization here, get some new players in there. The Falcons, however, they've had such bad quarterback play as of late that settling for that top 10 to 14, wherever Kirk is in your mind. I think Kirk played his best football last year. Um makes sense. Their defense was good. Not exactly pressure, but um, it was good, in, you know, at points there. They got pieces to be excited about on offense. They got the eighth pick still in the draft. I think they could go, they could still add a weapon there. Um, they signed Darnell Mooney. So I'm excited for the Falcons pieces in fantasy. And in a weaker NFC, I think it makes sense for them, you know, two to three years. It is what it is. Uh, hope that Kirk is playing good football. Not impossible. He could go on like a Matt Stafford type run. Um, and yeah, wheels up for the fantasy pieces there. Kendrick Bourne back with the Patriots is what it is, you know. Um, moving on here. T. Higgins wants a trade from the Bengals. We'll see what happens there. They're, they're really in no situation to oblige that. Tony Pollard is a Titan. I like the Titans moves uh, so far. They, and yeah, like these, some of these teams are overpaying, but you have to realize you can only pay for what's available in free agency, right? It's not like you can just be like, okay, I want to sign Calvin Johnson. I want to sign prime Aaron Donald. Those players do not hit free agency. So the Titans, they had cap space to burn. They signed Calvin Ridley. I really like that signing for them. Yes, he is 29. He's a little old. Um, his season was hit or miss last year. I still think he was pretty unlucky with coming down with the football and the role they made him play. Um, but adding, adding Calvin Ridley, um, adding Tony Pollard, who is an, I think is still going to be an explosive option for them, a dump off option who can work in tangent with Tajay Spears, where probably neither Taji nor Tony should be getting the majority of the rock. And this lets them, Give both of them, uh, you know, give both of them drives. And it really gives them a shot to evaluate Will Levis, right? Will Levis now going to have DeAndre Hopkins, going to have Calvin Ridley, going to have Tony Pollard, going to have Tajay Spears. This is an offense that sounds fun. And I really like Will Levis at quarterback 29 in fantasy or whatever he was. Moving on, Gabe Davis is a Jaguar. That is about, for leaving uh, the Bills, that's one of the best, Places Gabe Davis could have signed. Of course, Chad Hall was the wide receiver coach for the Bills. He's now the wide receiver coach for the Jaguars. So there is that connection between the teams. Um, don't Calvin Ridley's out of there, unquestionably, right? Don't know the deal with Zay Jones being a Jaguar, but Gabe is a guy who is an elite blocking wide receiver, and we know. He's best ball Gabe, right? We know he has huge ceilings. He's going to be playing with big arm Trevor Lawrence. So I like the signing for Gabe. I like the signing for the Jaguars. From a volume perspective, Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk should have a lot of targets. You know, we know Gabe is not a huge target guy, but it, it, he is a high dot, high average depth of target guy. Um, and Zay's been banged up in in back-to-back -back years somewhat. So... Gabe could have some huge spike weeks. If he's cheap, I'm a buyer in fantasy for sure. 
Josh Jacobs is a Packer. I think that's a great uh, swap for the Packers. You know, they have a good young team. They're a team that wants weapons to support Jordan Love. Aaron Jones played some really good football last year, but he's old. So they got rid of him. They brought in Josh Jacobs. They're betting on the Josh Jacobs from two years ago to be the Josh Jacobs rather than the Josh Jacobs from last year. And I think it makes sense, right? Um, Aaron Jones is a Viking. So, yeah, I don't think that kills um, Chandler's value. Like, like I'm sure the market's dinging him. You know, Aaron Jones, I think he's 29, maybe 30 now. Um, he's going to, he's going to have share the rock with the guy. And we know Ty Chandler is explosive, but I would definitely put Jones as the favorite to tout the rock. And I don't really know what's going on with the Vikings offense. We'll, we'll get to them later. Uh, real quick, just as we're getting to the other running back moves, I wanted to say that my opinion of why the first couple of days of free agency saw running backs, um, you know, signing contracts right away, some of them to some decent deals is twofold. One, a lot of people have said this, is that the NFL draft teams do not like the incoming rookie running back class as much as the past. Some think this is a little bit nil related. Uh, players are getting paid more in college, so no need to risk it in the NFL where careers could be short. You're not paid that much on your rookie contract. The other thing I would say is, this crop of free agents, like some of these running backs are some special players of the past. And I think some teams are willing to roll the dice on them because each of them have some reasons why they may be um, underperformed in the past. Saquon is an Eagle. And that I still haven't fully wrapped my head around that for fantasy. I think that's one of the biggest um, fantasy transactions we've seen. Of course, last year, Eagles running backs disappointed in fantasy. But that was an anomaly year, in my opinion, compared to the past couple years, even with Hertz at helm. So I think Saquon raises the ceiling of the offense as a whole. Just a better player than DeAndre Swift, even in his uh, twilight years here. And yeah, I mean, the touchdowns could go to Saquon. They could go to A.J. Brown. They could go to Devonta Smith. Hertz can still run them in, but the spike week should be there. The consistency of the whole offense, maybe not. Um, if the, I don't think Saquon should be like a mid second, a high second round pick. That's probably too expensive, but I could see the market doing that with him. Antonio Gibson is a Patriot, which I think is both a good signing for Ramondre bulk case. And it's also a good signing for Gibson, right? He is, I mean, this, this is a signing where he's very likely to be at least the two, maybe 1B type role. Um, definitely a late round guy I'm interested in mixing in. He, you know, the Patriots could view him as like a souped up James White, maybe. Um, some, yeah, the... The Panthers upgraded their O-line, which I would also say is notable. They're overpaying for some of these guys, but it is a it is a good move, um, especially with who their quarterback is. Zach Moss is a Bengal. I think opinions are split on the Moss slash Chase Brown. Zach Moss, of course, is more of your thumper, more of your short uh, down back. Had a really good year last year with the Colts. I would say he's probably the favorite for goal line duties, but I think I'm more interested personally in Chase Brown. I just could see Chase Brown taking a dump off 80 yards. Um, hopefully it's like a 60, 40 type split, no matter how it, how it's cut. And I I'm interested in both running backs in fantasy for sure. Uh, assuming the cost is not crazy. Devin Singletary is a giant. Of course, he has the Brian Dable connection from when Dable was the Bills coach. Um, looking like the default 1B, you know, something I've said before is like Devin Singletary, any given year just kind of oscillates between like the 16th round, the 14th round to the 8th to 10th. 
Um, should be a high volume role for Devin, especially with no clear RB2 there. Like, hard to say even who the RB2 is for the Giants. You got guys like Gray, their rookie last year. Um, you got Matt Breida, maybe. Devontae Parker is an eagle. That's a that's a nothing burger. Um, keep keep it on going on here. Gus Edwards is a charger. Pretty good landing spot for him, especially with Greg Roman being there, a Jim Harbaugh being there. You know, of course, they've been heavily linked to uh, Michigan's running back. I'm forgetting his name right now, but you know who I'm talking about. So we'll have to see what actually happens there. Austin Eckler is out of the Chargers. He is a commander. And Austin Eckler looked pretty cooked last year. However, the optimistic sign of him is that before he hurt his ankle, he looked good. So hard to know what Austin Eckler you're getting with the commanders. Um, I don't mind the swing of dice for a team with a lot of cap space. Getting a rookie in there. You're at least getting a veteran. Um, compliments Brian Robinson. So probably more interested than the market in Eckler. But yeah, wide range of how that could fall. Gardner Minshew is a Raider. Um, and I guess we should also talk about Justin Fields, where I've been a Fields doubter myself in the past. This year, I was viewing him as a buy early on, just, just assuming he would get to play for a team um, at the moment. I don't know who that team is, if that team exists. It seems like NFL, other NFL teams are like, look, we're not, we're not overpaying for fields. And if you're the Bears and no one's going to give you at least a third, at least a fourth for fields, you're kind of incentivized just to keep him, sit him behind Caleb Williams, if Caleb gets hurt, you got a high quality backup. Uh, if not, you can trade him midseason to a team who loses his quarterback, or you, you know, who knows? Uh, you, you'll trade him next year, tag and trade, whatever. But I don't see that him being traded just for like a seventh round pick, just to get the breath off of Caleb Williams. I don't view that type of thing happening there. Well, Disley's a Charger. He's a good blocking tight end, so we kind of. We kind of see what the Chargers are trying to do here. Um, build a smash mouth team. Um, moving on here. Moving on. Noah Fant is back with the Seahawks. People were excited about him. I, I don't know how exciting Noah Fant landing back with the Seahawks is. Um, he's not been used that heavily in the past. Will Disley is out of there, so... Not impossible. He gets more playing time. Um, they always kind of seem to play too, though. Tyler Lockett is also back with the Seahawks on a bit of a discount. Jacoby Brissett's a Patriot. That's seeming like a, a veteran move to help uh, mentor a rookie, but not impossible. They're going to play him. Noah Brown is back with the Texans, which I think he is a great round 18 to 20 type dart if he's still uh, that cheap. I don't think it's possible the Texans upgrade wide receiver, but you know, one injury we've, we've seen this and Noah Brown will get serious time and has decent upside. Um, Tyrod Taylor is a jet. That is a good backup quarterback option for the jets, especially with Rogers being crazy injured, maybe running for president, vice president. I don't know. Sam Darnold is a Viking. A $10 million deal there. That to me seems like um like I don't I don't think they're planning on playing Darnold serious minutes this year, especially with their trade, which we're gonna get to in a bit here. Uh that happened today. But I think it is at worst a veteran option. They can play him to start the year. They can play him the whole year if they need to. Um gives them gives them back up there. Marcus Mariota is a commander. That type of signing, the Mariota signing, heavily insinuates to me that they're leaning Jaden Daniels at the two, right? If you choose Marcus Mariota as your backup, who's, who was Jalen Hurts' backup, you're probably going Jaden Daniels. You're not going Drake May, who's more the traditional 
pocket passer, right? And if you go Sam Darnold, you're probably not trading up for Jaden Daniels. Maybe you're thinking trading up for Drake May, trading up for J.J. McCarthy. Jameis Winston is a Brown. Um, Jameis Winston loves the backup, the backup quarterback option. And I mean, hey, with Deshaun being terrible uh, in recent years and with um, him being injured, pretty good landing spot for Jameis if he gets time on the field. Mike Kosicki, one-year deal with the Bengals. You know, we've done this with Mike before. Um, if he gets to play serious minutes, though, pretty good landing spot for him. Joe Mixon was originally cut, and then they traded him to the Texans and even signed a pretty rich extension, in my opinion. Um, And yeah, I mean, this is a pretty great landing spot for Joe Mixon. I've been a Joe Mixon hater in the past, uh, not the least because of his legal option, legal uh, troubles, but no Devin Singletary, pretty rich contract, not a great running back draft. Um, the coach seems to be obsessed with getting some runs in there. So really good offense. Couldn't ask for much better spot for Joe Mixon, in my opinion. Darna Mooney with the Falcons on a pretty rich deal, like more than uh, Gabe Davis. And, you know, we're only like a year or two removed from Darnell Mooney having like a great season in fantasy. So I like that with Kirk as the, as the deep threat there. Um, moving on, Drew Locke with the Giants. Yeah, I mean, this is just the slow hedge of, hey, I mean, Daniel Jones hasn't been able to stay healthy and he's really cheap in best ball. It makes it tougher to draft him with them being like, look, if Daniel Jones is bad or whatever, they might just roll the dice and be like, what do you got, Drew Locke? Gerald Everett is a bear, even worse for Cole Komet, but what, you know, he could have a good season still. Um, moving on, moving on. Naheem Hines, who got hurt on a, um, jet ski last year is with the Browns. Yeah. Okay. A little bit interesting there. Um, Isaiah McKenzie, who has Brian Dable familiarity is with the Giants. The, the these don't move the needle much. Dearness Johnson back with the Jaguars in the mix as the RB2 there, in my opinion. Um, Ty Johnson signs back with the Bills. At worst, the RB3, I would think, had a lot more juice than Lat Murray. Um, and depending what the Bills do in the draft, could be the RB2 after James Cook, who's not the biggest guy in the world. Hunter Renfro was released. He could sign somewhere interesting. I'm really curious who signs Mike Williams and what they give him. I could see Mike Williams trying to bet on himself um, and taking a one-year deal with a good team. I could also see a team that's bad overpaying Mike Williams and just kind of betting on him um, being healthy. So interested to see what happens there. Mike Thomas was cut. Don't really know how much he has left in the tank. Mason Rudolph the backup for the Titans. So seems like Tannehill's out of there, and that's a, a further commitment to Levis, in my opinion. Um, Mitch Rudisky, also the backup in Buffalo now for pretty cheap. Joe Flacco, the backup of the Colts. I don't really get that one. $9 million for that. Don't really love that, but hey, you got a quarterback who didn't protect himself last year in Richardson, and can play competent football. Um, Matt Collins signs with the Bills, and also Curtis Samuel signs with the Bills. The Matt Collins one, I think Matt Collins is at worst a good special teams player. He's had some good seasons in fantasy. He's given some spike week games. I think Matt Collins is a high floor Gabe Davis type clone at worst, where you can put Matt Collins in the Gabe Davis role you can have him block. You can have him be a deep A-dot guy. It doesn't force you to play Justin Shorter, the second-year guy. It doesn't force you to draft someone if the draft doesn't fall how you want it. So it seems like it's a flexible, cheap move for them. Um, and then Curtis Samuel, 
you know, I've seen a lot of opinions on this. I really liked the signing for Buffalo. I think Curtis Samuel was like arguably in the mix for wide receiver three and free agency after Ridley and, or maybe wide receiver four after Ridley, um, Hollywood and Darnell Mooney, where, I mean, Curtis Samuel is only 28. He is still fast as hell. He played his best football with Joe Brady in 2020. I think Curtis Samuel is going to get a, quite a bit of rushing attempts. We've seen Buffalo try to get this. They first tried to trade for J.D. McKissick. Then they tried to uh, put Naheem Hines in this role before he got hurt. So I think that type of role, this like passing down running back, which James Cook has not exactly flourished in. Uh, you know, he's a bit of a stone hands. I think Curtis Samuel could be used like that. I think Curtis Samuel could be that Cole Beasley type role. I think he could, you know, he's going to be getting touches out of the backfield. He's not a Gabe Davis replacement, right? He's not going to play on the outside a bunch. I think it gives them flexibility where if Diggs does slow down versus if he was just hurt, um, you have some high, high quality options there. And it doesn't force them to go wide receiver in round one or two if they don't like the options there. But I still think they will be doing that. People have asked how it impacts Khalil Shakir. I personally, at this time, think the Bills will have packages for all of them. I think they'll have, you know, I'm expecting Kincaid to take that leap. He's going to get quite a bit of slot and down the seam targets. Diggs is still going to be a big part of the offense, probably the number one target earner if healthy. If they do draft a rookie in round one or round two, they can bring that guy around slowly. Probably they will be drafting a bigger body, more of a Gabe Davis, you know, so like a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. makes sense, someone like that. But yeah, no, I think Shakir could play on the outside, but he's kind of done more of his damage from the slot. So I just think the, you know, you lose one guy and now at least you have high quality options where in the past, they were playing Trent Shurfield. They were playing Deontay Hardy. You know, like giving serious minutes to Trent Shurfield is not a winning recipe. Now, if something happens to, say they go with Curtis Samuel and they view Shakir more as that wide receiver three, well, going from Samuel to Shakir is not a huge drop-off. So pretty underrated, high-quality signing for Buffalo. Hollywood Brown is a chief. Love that signing for the Chiefs. Um, hard to think through what the exact pecking order will be between Rasheed Rice, but I think their skills really complement well where in the cover two era, you know, Rasheed Rice is what we saw last year, at least his rookie year. He was more of a yak guy, yard after catch guy, and he was great at that. Now you have him year two. You have Hollywood Brown in that souped up, MBS role where he's like an MBS that can actually catch. And I mean, Hollywood Brown has been a really, really good wide receiver in the NFL other than his injuries in the past couple of years. So I think he could smash. Um, I'll be interested to see how teams defend the chiefs because the chiefs were content to dink and dunk. They had a very low average depth of target. And I don't think that's purely just because of cover two. I also think it's because Mahomes was like, Look, bro, MVS and Justin Watson are dropping these balls like half the time. So I think great signing. I've always been into Hollywood and best ball and, of course, will be again. Rondell Moore is a Falcon. I don't think that really moves the needle, but he's there. Corey Davis applied to return to the NFL, um, so he's not done yet. Sam Howell is a Seahawk. Um, I'm still expecting Gino to have the lead there, but you know, with their new head coach there, I could see packages for Sam Howell. If something happens to Gino, you got Howell who he's interesting, you know, he could he could improve. Um, AJ Dillon is back with the Packers. I'm confused on that one, man. AJ Dillon has been brutal as of late. And then that brings us more to today, where the I've seen different opinions on this. The Texans traded their first round pick, number 23, and I think a 
sixth or seventh, number 232. And they received the Vikings pick 42, so they're second. 188, so they go from 232 to 188. And they're getting the Vikings second round pick next year, which I think they're expecting the Vikings to not be a great team. Now, I think this is almost certainly quarterback related. And let's talk about the three most likely options I personally see happening. Number one, the Vikings trade number 11 this year, their pick, plus number 23 this year, plus some first next year, whatever they need to, and they go all the way up to number three, and they trade up down with the Patriots, and they take probably Drake May would be the option there. So this would be the Patriots being, you know what? Our roster is so down bad. We need to we need to stock up on talent. We'll get our quarterback next year. Jaden Daniels is the LSU quarterback, and I think he is likely to be a commander, as we talked about, due to, I think, the Marcus Mariota signing somewhat tips the hand there that they're thinking Daniels at two. Um, the other option, I think, the second most likely option is the Chargers are a team with their moves. It really seems like Harbaugh's going in there and being like, this roster is old and not good. So I could see them for sure trading down from five. And that would mean that the Vikings are in love with the assumption is J.J. McCarthy. They don't think J.J. McCarthy is going to last to 11. And they're going to trade up to Chargers at five. Also, the Cardinals could be in the mix at four. But I'm really kind of feeling Marvin Harrison Jr. there for the Cardinals with the moves they made. Just makes sense to me. Um, a more outlandish theory, which I personally do not think is realistic. But hey, it's the NFL. I guess it could happen. Would be the Chargers trade Justin Herbert to the Vikings for all the picks they have, plus probably like two more firsts and another second or something. And the Vikings are going all in for Justin Herbert. And I mean, I think that would immediately make the Vikings Super Bowl contenders in the NFC. The NFC quarterback wise is terrible compared to the AFC. Um, and Justin Herbert would automatically be maybe the best quarterback in the NFC. Um, I think the Chargers would be insane to make that trade, but hey, if Harbaugh's in there and he's like, we're getting my guy McCarthy, trust me. Um, another possibility for the Vikings is they want McCarthy. They don't think he's going top five. They don't think he's worth it at 11. They want the maneuverability between 11 and 23 to either trade down or trade up to secure McCarthy at the right price. That one seems more of a gamble. You know, like you're making these moves right now. Um, I personally don't love the trade from the Texans perspective because it's like, look, the, I, I get it. The second round pick next year is awesome. And the Vikings could be bad. Like that could be a really high second, almost a first round pick. And maybe you think that draft class is really good. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not into that type of scouting, but I mean, the Texans are on the rookie contract of Stroud. They're on the rookie contract of Nico of tank Dell. Go get, you know, why are we, why are we get, getting less talented players this year? Uh, when you should be, you know, kind of going like all in now, they're still going to be on the rookie contracts next year. And a lot of people think the Vikings overpaid a little bit, but is what it is. Um, Aaron Donald retired from the NFL. And just recently, Mike Vrabel is going to be consulting for the Browns, which doesn't really move. Let's see if we get anything else from Adam Schefter. Um, no, no, no. Okay, I think I touched on almost everything relevant. Um, let's look at some comments here before I jump into the draft. And let me know if there's any free agency things I did not talk about um, before I go forward here. Neighbors at five. Yeah, I mean, if the Chargers do stay at five, I think a wide receiver seems very, very likely for them. And I mean, hey, neighbors linked up with Justin Herbert. 
pretty wheels up there. The Viking pick we talked about. Baker and Cousins are mediocrity. Yeah, I mean, Cousins, he's a little bit better than that, but yeah. Do you think the Giants would be the best case scenario for Fields? I mean, at this point, maybe, right? Like, And I don't really see Dable wanting to do that because then it's like, if you do that, you're kind of being like, we're going to be stuck with the this trio of weirdos in Drew Locke, Daniel Jones, and Fields. And it seems a little prohibitive for like going to get your guy in future years, which I think from Dable's perspective, he'd rather be like, look, we fucked up with Jones. I'm still a good coach. Give me another year here, owner. Let me get a new rookie in there. And I could see them doing that. You want the Pats to move down out of three? Where do you want them to, how far down do you want them to go? Um, you should definitely get fantasy points if A-Rod is vice president. I agree, Joey. Darnold is a placeholder. Yeah, seems likely. Um, Gus Bus a Charger. We talked about that. What's up, Josh? Samuel solid. Yeah, I mean, Curtis Samuel has never played with a good quarterback. So going from that to Josh Allen, awesome. Thoughts on Titans QB? Will Levis or, I mean, unquestionably, Will Levis is the quarterback there. Mason Rudolph, one year, 3.2 million journeyman. Um... Let's see. NFL people believe McCarthy will be better pro than he was at Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I don't, bro, this time of year is so, so weird, right? Because the past two years, first, uh, Will Levis was going to be, he was going to go at number four, second round pick. Um, before him, the the other Titans quarterback, I can't remember his name right now, fell to like the third or fourth, you know? Some people have McCarthy ranked third. Risky to assume he falls. I don't know. Any chance Bears trade down? I think 0.0% Bears and or um, Commanders trade down unless it's like a blockbuster trade for like Justin Herbert. And yeah, Malik Willis. Thank you, man. So yeah, guys, that is our free agency roundup so far. Um, still some moves to happen. You know, the second wave of free agency, a lot of quality moves can be had. Um, just some quick reminders before we jump into this draft. Make sure you like and subscribe the video. It really helps me out. If you have not joined the Discord, the link to join is in the YouTube description below. And if you want to support the channel and get access to my premium Discord, Become a YouTube member. Yes, we talked about that MD quite a bit. I think the Mariota heavily leans towards the Daniels pick, right? That's just that's just logical. You sign Mariota, you probably want Jaden Daniels, right? So, you know, if I was uh, betting on who goes to, I would be betting on um, Daniels at this point. Where previously it did seem that Drake was a little bit of the favorite. Just another sad season for New England fans. Yeah, I mean, maybe, right? Like, I think you have a couple options to be happy enough as a Patriots fan. Number one, you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. And you say, fuck it. We got our Jamar Chase type guy. Quarterback we'll get next year. Um or you trade down, you get a bunch of picks. Or you take the rookie quarterback, which if I was running the team, i probably do that. The big board is over 50% filled. I got to join on my phone. Fun little game. I always got to do this. One more if you want to draft with me. We're in there. This is my first draft since free agency started. I was in Key West last week, so no drafts for me down there. Just living life. Pulled the 107. And we have a full badge brigade. Red and black badges, which just means they're volume drafters. Guys, we're on the road to 5K. 
If you have not subscribed, please do and help me reach that goal. Um, I'm going to be having on JJ Zacharyson next week. I believe on Tuesday, I'm going to have JJ on to talk about the incoming rookie class. So we had on Jacob Sanderson, going to have JJ Zacharyson, a huge guest for the channel um, next Tuesday. Going to be the first time having JJ on and chopping up with him. So looking forward to that. I believe we're doing that on Tuesday, if I'm remembering correctly. But I guess I can just confirm it for you guys. Yeah, Tuesday, I think we're planning at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So a lot of people love JJ's prospect guide. Um, I'm going to buy that for the first time this year to take a, you know, see what all the hoopla is about. And to hear from the man himself. Appreciate you, fantasy dog. All right, we pulled the 107. A lot of different ways to go. Um, but let's get Bijan. You know, I think if Bijan didn't have Arthur Smith, he'd probably be going ahead of the 107. I think Bijan after Brees Hall, I think I'm I think I'm Bijan there. One of the few running backs you feel good about in fantasy, getting Kirk Cousins there, getting the upgrade. Who's baby Stevie, dude? Oh, here's baby Stevie. Okay, I get it. Thank you for telling me, CSM. You're legally required to tell me. First big board, Josh. Let's get it, fam. You think Bilf is like a, a MILF remix? And his name's like Bob. Bob Ilf. Fancy dog says, I'm hearing a lot of negative on Daniels. Arm strength, age, one-year wonder. Yeah, I mean, this is line season. Teams that want a player will ask pundits and or pay them to just start being negative about them. They're trying to get in each other's head. Wow. So Saquon up to the one-two turn with the Eagles. I mean, I get it. It's just pretty steep. I definitely would want some exposure to him got my underdog hat i've been wear wearing that a lot recently got an absolutely awful haircut so that helps legal purposes thank you dfs patriot fourth you still been drafting like may as a commander maybe i just don't i don't see what the commanders are not incentivized to lie at all with their signings, right? There's no reason for them to make non-transparent moves because they don't have to worry about the 101. Barkley not going to see many goal line carries. That could change with Jason Kelsey out of there um, and or to Saquon being more explosive. I'm going to take my first share of Marvin Harrison Jr. and just hope he's at least a Cardinal. The gap between Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts is absolutely fucking insane. That has to narrow eventually. Baby Stevie says, listening but working as well. I have to multitask to get the drafts in. Hey, baby. Bill from the chat. Is this you, Pat? Pat, are you Bilf? MD saying Kelsey was the tush push. I personally think it is a large part to do also with Jalen Hurts' ability to squat like 800 pounds or whatever. Snowman says he's out on Barkley that early. Yeah, no, I like a lot of the players more than him personally. Um, but you'll notice that some draft, you know, 
The guy who takes Saquon on one, two, he's also probably thinking Derrick Henry there on there. 600 pounds. Hey, well, that that was before, bro. He's a grown man now. He's older. Um, talking through the free agent running back signings, I think Saquon is the chalk to assume he has the best year. Derrick Henry could have an insane efficient year, though. Just, again, stealing a bunch of touchdowns. Um, like, if, if Derrick Henry lucked into 25 touchdowns, it's not going to be that crazy. Ryan said, sorry I'm late. Who do you think is Vikings QB in 2024? Ryan, you might have to rewind on that, man. I spent quite a bit of time talking through the options there, and it's... I don't I don't have a strong lean right now. How many drafts is this for you? Only like seven or eight. This is this is the off season for me. Am I gonna max it? Maybe. I might I might get some second wind. Or I might fire off a bunch right before the draft when I'm honing my rankings for my site that will launch with BBM five. Great price on digs. I mean, Mike Evans, another year older, but back with the Bucks. Mike Mike Evans' wife was like, look, bro, you're not leaving Tampa. We got our family here. He's like, okay, all right, I was going to test free agency, but not no more. Um, we're going to do Mike Evans, and I'm also going to go Malik Neighbors. Actually, I'm not going to go Malik Neighbors because I don't get to make two picks in a row. That's, that's not how that works at the seven. I don't know what I'm thinking about. A fantasy dog. You know what's up. Ooh, ooh. You're all done at 150? Very nice. Yeah, I usually, I mean, a lot of my big boards in the past have been like guest streams and whatnot. I draft all summer, so a little bit of break makes sense. Malik Neighbors is a guy I've seen go as high as the two three turn. I like that. I like that price on him at the end of the third, though. Jew says, "Good morning, good morning." Do you think Diggs' current ADP is right? Do you mean too expensive or too cheap? Um, I personally. It's probably a little too cheap on him, but I think Diggs has a wider range than, you know, and, and that's being assessed in the cost right now, where it's like, look, I think, should Diggs go after Rasheed Rice? Probably not, right? Like, he's probably a little expensive. Um, Derek Carr's number one in Olave versus Diggs? I don't know. But... Diggs is either going to be by far and away the number one target in Buffalo. It's probably the most likely option. Or he's dealing with Curtis Samuel plus Don Kincaid plus Khalil Shakir all being older and better plus maybe a first or second round rookie. Um, but yeah, I would say Diggs is chalk to receive the bulk of the targets. Could go a couple different ways here, but I'm going to grab ETN. Feels good to get um, a Bijan ETN start plus Marvin Harrison Jr. and Mike Evans start. Just seems very high quality running back and wide outs. You think Diggs falls for BBM if they draft Brian Thomas? Yeah, this is what I've been saying, Fantasy Dog. Like People are really bad at adding context, right? We're really good at game score 
watching or watching the last couple games of the season and overweighting those, fantasy industry is great at that. So we're great at being like, hey, Diggs didn't do anything the last couple games. But the rumor is, slash, I think just the fact, he hurt his abdomen playing in the London game, and I think he played through it. So do you want to punish a guy for playing through injury for the team? Or do you want to reward that, right? Because if Diggs, let's say Diggs had the start of his year that he did, and then he got hurt in London, and then he just did not play the rest of the year, where would he be priced then? Well, he'd probably be priced around A.J. Brown. You know? So the industry is punishing him for playing through that. Nico or Tank, who do you like more? When both are healthy, I did like Tank a little bit more. Um, but with the Tank, you know, uncertainty, I, it makes sense that Nico is more expensive. Um, but I'm a buyer on both. Taking Gibbs at the turn every time, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not. I don't think it's a lock. Gibbs g takes as big of a jump as is assumed, but he is a very safe, high ceiling, weekly ceiling type guy. Um, I still think Montgomery will get those a bulk of the touches in close. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude's explosive and elite. Derrick Henry goes in the fourth, where Saquon goes at the second. I'm way more, I think, into the Henry side at that cost. Um, interesting, interesting disparity, though. I did not. I I thought Henry for sure would be. I think Henry will climb. I like that Josh Jacobs price quite a bit. I like actually these like this ETN Cook White range. I like the whole range. Adunzie feels great to pair as my wide receiver three here. I mean, Adunzie, he could be a Falcon. I don't think the Darnell Mooney signing means for sure that he couldn't be a Falcon at eight. So he could be with Kirk in that kind of like um, Jordan Addison type role, but maybe better. He could be a Charger if the Chargers trade down. He could be a Bear. So he could be, it could be Adunzie, Caleb Williams, I mean, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Caleb. That sounds pretty fun. Could be a giant. Yeah, I mean, look, is the giant, are the giants the best option for him? No, but if he is a giant, he'll probably be by far and away the number one target there, which is, that's not so bad either. Odunze. Thank you, man. Odunze. Odunze. I think this is a great price on Kenneth Walker. Calvin Ridley, pretty fun price there. Big arm Will Levis, not afraid to take risks. Thoughts on Kamara? Kamara? Um... Just keep on adding syllables. Yeah, there's a silent Q in there. Adunzi. <laughs> Adunzi and uh, Kule. Um, Camara, I don't know, man. Like, it's not exciting for half point PPR. Is it going to be surprising, though, if he has like a great stretch? No, not either. I find it tough to click him, but. He could just be like, I remember last year people were like, oh my God, all those Camara teams. This is my first draft since free agency, Gorgle. So you're surprised though, Deontay Johnson is not off the board yet. 
he goes in the 80s. I mean, I definitely like him more than like probably JSN and Gang. Um, yeah, Kincaid feels great here. Get, I definitely want to be. Most years, I want to be into elite tight end, and it feels even better this year where the elite tight ends are mostly young. Laporta, McBride, Kincaid. Um, and then you got some real stars of the past, Kelsey, Kittle, Mark Andrews. I think Kyle Pitts is very appetizing too, who dude was injured last year. But I mean, not impossible. Kincaid is the number one passing target with the ooh, Hollywood Brown. I like that one too. But yeah, I mean, just getting a tight end that can give you 15 to 20 does a lot if that points happen to fall a playoff week. Have you addressed your preferred Bills draft targets? I think uh, I think the Bills will run a lot of packages, and a lot of guys are pretty appetizing. And, if, you know, one injury happens on offense, and it can bump a guy up 15 to 20%. That's a crazy price for Hollywood. Yeah, it's just price lag. You know, there's not a high volume of drafts. Yeah, if you if you guys have been watching my streams, and like I think in my first stream I mentioned that Curtis Samuel seems like a pretty likely target for the Bills. And I also said Hollywood, I think, would either be a Bill or a Chief on a prove it deal. And both those things happen. How much, if any, of your portfolio do you think you'd consider doing double elite quarterback? Or just not really viable this year given the depth at the quarterback position? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm almost always a buyer of the elites with the idea of when they have their ceilings, like you just need to have them to win the contest. Um, that's how I won uh, most of my best ball tournaments that won as well. However, I re really feel the quarterback market is just a little bizarre right now with like, like the gap between jo Josh and Hertz and Lamar is like pretty weird. And then there's some guys I really like starting around 7 to 10. Guys like Dak, Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, Kyler, all those guys. So, I mean, I those guys are elites to me. So if you're saying like a Josh and one of those, yeah, do it up. If you're saying like a Josh and Hurts, I think that is, I would do that sometimes as well. Joe Burrow, I think, is a really great price for like a weekly ceiling type guy. Um, but it's cheaper than it's ever been. Right? If you want to do Josh and Hertz last year, that was two, three turn or Josh and Mahomes. So I think it always pays off to get unique. And a lot of positions feel relatively deep to me right now. Even wide receiver compared to years past feels like, oh, I, I can get this guy. That feels pretty good. Um, tight end does not feel the deepest to me, but let me focus here. I like a lot of these names here. Um, I think I'm going to take one of the running backs, though. I'm going to go with Ramondre. Just kind of feels like the safest option. Tony, of course, feels like the more explosive, higher weekly ceiling guy. But, you know, Ramondre off a bad season, competing with Antonio Gibson. Feels really good to have this start at three, in my opinion, great running backs, three wide receivers who I feel good about as well. And then a, 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 a tight end who I feel great about from a weekly ceiling perspective. Um, and could, you know, could Kincaid have a better season than McBride and Laporta? Of course he could, right? Like that's not out of the, the range of cards there. Um, and he could like way outscore Bowers and Kittle, or he could be outscored by like Pitts. That for sure could happen as well. But yeah, it feels like a really solid balanced start for me. And then I'll just take probably the most mispriced position right now, which is quarterback. What's up, Rally? 
loads of player movement this offseason. What's the number one thing you consider when evaluating a player choosing teams? Um, I would say opportunity and weekly upside slash just offensive environment, right? So, like, I'm interested in Derrick Henry because he's he's pretty cheap. And even though there will be seasons where Lamar steals a lot of the rushing touchdowns and, and Henry gets cucked by some running back in the draft, he has some smash seasons. So I'm, I'm buying that, right? Like uh, Curtis Samuel, I'm buying that on Buffalo and have been cheap. Could have a, could have a huge season, could have like a thousand yards, six touchdowns. If you miss a, getting a tight end by Nujoku, it really feels like you're forced into taking a four tight end build. Yeah, man, I do not like, um, I agree with you. Like that kind of range, Nujoku, Fur, Goddard, Schultz, like after that, it's like minimum three. And I don't even feel great about it. Like getting a tight end that gets you seven points is no longer as viable as it used to be, especially if this cover two era is forcing teams to just target the tight ends more, right? Um, like there are some guys I like. I like Mayor Laid. I like, you know, I see the upside for some of them. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go quarterback here. It's between Herbert and Kyler. You know, wide receiver is pretty dried up. I'm going to go Kyler just because I'm assuming at this point in time that Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a Cardinal. So getting that Kyler stack makes sense. Hey, Josh. Thanks for supporting the YouTube. You are a YouTube member. I need to figure out how to automate it so that when you're a YouTube member, you can just join the premium discord on your own and i don't have to manually do that so stay with me as i figure that out but if you're in the discord josh just message me with proof you're a youtube member and i will manually add you for the time being and thanks for supporting <laughs> this comment man as a ravens fan so biased I think Henry pickup is great for some Bateman spike weeks. What? Why is why is Derrick Henry great for Rashad Bateman? I don't I don't get it. With some play action deep balls, I guess, man. I mean, the biggest thing for Rashad Bateman is what is his health. Yeah, I mean, like these quarterbacks going in the seventh. In eighth round so far, primarily Burrow, Prescott, and Kyler have weekly ceilings as high as anyone in fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, I think there will be two waves of thought this coming fantasy season. You're going to have the, the running back truthers who are like, Derrick Henry with the Ravens? Smash! And then you're going to have other people who are like another year older, blah, blah, blah. Adonai Mitchell is a rookie I'm pretty into, seemed to test well. Could see him landing somewhere nice. Pat Joy says, I'm done with Bateman. It's how injured players are, man. Some people are done with them. Some people like to roll the dice. Chase Brown to go with the Joe Burrow. Got the uh, Bengals super stack going on over there. Man, wide receiver, I guess, does dry up by this time. So, I took Trevor. I'm going to take Trevor and be done at quarterback. It's 20 rounds, so it gives me an extra position to play around with. Um, and I got the Trevor and ETN correlation of sorts where either they can spit ball off each other. Um, and there are some cheap options. 
to add with. And I just like Trevor's weekly upside. <laughs> ML saying, Liam, you crossed my mind on the marquee slash Kansas City news. Remember watching you draft a main event last year and you told the other guy like seventh, eighth round. Close your eyes. Vision this. Marquise traded to the Chiefs midseason. Yeah, I also talked about it a couple of weeks ago, man. It just just makes sense. And I mean, I think I think Hollywood was smart to bet on himself. He's taking a one-year prove it deal with a great quarterback. He could have a huge season. Rally, bro. Thanks for joining, become a YouTube member. Look at us, guys. Look at us here. We'll be doing weekly streams at minimum until actual NFL draft is done. And that is when um that's when BBM5 launches and my site. Samir White is who I was also going to do just because I like the other quarterback options. And I mean, Samir right now seems in a pretty good, pretty good landing spot. Gonna see a bunch of volume. Um, but you could also see the Raiders being like, we need to draft three rookie running backs. Rally is an active member in the Discord. Link to join us below. He said he grabbed a membership because Liam is a dog and Derrick Henry's a dog. Who? Who? Yeah, I think I think Khalil Shakir's price um needs to fall a little bit, but he's a good roll of the dice, especially from a weekly upside perspective. Mitch saying, I can't let go. My Bateman and Dotson agendas must live on. Yeah, Hollywood is only 26, so he should get paid next year. Um, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes good to zoom out in fantasy and not just be a year-to-year -year guy. I can give the example of like the year before the year before um Dawson Knox had like one of his better seasons. We'll pause real quick, come back. Man, wide receiver is getting pretty gross here. Um, some running backs to like here too. I'm going to take Tyler Lockett. Boring. A boring wide receiver four. Took a pay cut. Still with there. Should have a good season. Um... I forget what I was saying before that, but Rally asked thoughts on Will Levis. I, I think Will Levis is a great, like, Will Levis at, he has he has climbed a little bit, um, but he's too cheap. You know, like, he's a, would I rather roll the dice on Will or Derek Carr? 100% Will. Like, Will's got probably a little bit less job security than a guy like Carr, but... He's got improved weapons. He's got ex two explosive running backs that he could dump it off to and could go score by themselves for him. Um, shh, bro. Lots of guys to like. Sorry you're late. It's okay, best ball guy. Turn turn your notifications on. Click that bell. You'll never miss a stream. I also notify my Discord in the streaming channel. Man, I took Lockett hoping that Gabe Davis would make it back to me here in the 11th because that's where his ADP was. But I understand that ADP is probably a little fake. So. Should I have done Gabe just to secure the stack with Trevor? Maybe. Is he just Drew Locke, though, in real life football? Man, like, man maybe. Maybe Will Levis is not that good, but he's got a, a good supporting cast. I think um, Traylon Burks from the slot is also a fun move. You know, they could add, like, Chiga Conquo sucks, so they could add a guy like Brock Bowers. And... You got this young quarterback, give him pieces and see how he can do. Drake, yeah, Tajay Spears I was interested in. Trey Benson I was interested in. Wide receiver just, just dies on a cliff, though, pretty soon. Drake London or one of the Niners wide receivers? I think I like Ayuk more than London, but I get it. AMD. Look at look at this YouTube member game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thanks, bro. Bowers would be rad, but they probably need a OT for sure. Yeah, like 
a team like the Bears, you almost wish their defense was like a little worse. Um, I suppose their defense improved a lot. You like Singletary in this range? Man, I like Singletary every year. Every year I just kind of buy Singletary and then um it works out. Every every year someone will be like Singletary's boring, whatever. He he just rises to the top. Singletary's gone. I think there are, are a lot of interesting spins of the dice I could do here. I'm going to go with Lad McConkey, though. Um, athletic seems like a fringe first rounder. Marshall's interested in Big Mike and some other guys. Jaden Daniels as my third quarterback or Kirk Cousins, even though I was planning to do two, is interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, like, wide receiver kind of, like, feels thin, but maybe I could have gotten away with the running back there. With these three, I'm probably stopping at five, though. Kincaid, Anchor, I'll probably go two more just because I can afford to. I'm going to refill my water here after my next pick. Yeah, I mean, Lad, Lad is looking like he could go middle of the first or late end of the first. Late end of the first is like, that's Cowboys territory. Um, I don't think Curtis Samuel or Hollywood Brown will stop the Chiefs or Bills from drafting a wideout. Yeah, I mean, people are saying Ladd is kind of like um, Puka, Nakua, which Rally's saying here, a zone zone beater. Do you wish the Rondre pick was wide receiver? This team looks kind of thin at this juncture. Uh, no. I mean, would I rather have Ramondre or Romeo Dobbs? I'd rather have Ramondre. Would I rather have Ramondre or Jacoby Myers? I'd rather have Ramondre. Would I rather have Ramondre or Deontay Johnson? I'd rather have Ramondre. So those were the three wideouts taken after me. Would I have Ramondre or Josh Downs, the next wideout? I'd rather have Ramondre. And you know, I won't I wouldn't always go Ramondre here, but you got to treat each draft individually. You can't be like, well, this team, you know, uh, I always need to be like this. You know, like it's okay to be like this team, I'm going running back heavy at the top. Would you take on Dobbs? People very greatly. Um one moment here, gang. I mean, Kirk is interesting here, but I'm going to go Jerome Ford, you know, and just go volume at wide out. He, um, he's got like the de facto lead at RB one. It seems like, I don't think, you know, he's probably not going to end the year as RB one, but should be in the running to us, give you some weeks. They could definitely add a rookie too. Um, but he's either way overpriced or way underpriced. And that seems like a good roll of the dice in round 12. And I don't really need to, you know, like Bijan, ETN, Ramondre. These are some consistent guys compared to a maybe in Ford. Bro, do you think Lazard comes to life with A-Rod? No. So yeah, back to Dobbs. Um, I don't know, man. Like I traditionally have not been a believer in him. He does not separate. Right, like last year, just kind of like watching a lot of Green Bay games, like Jordan Love was like throwing some frozen ropes to the man, and of course, Christian Watson was hurt majority of the year, so that helped Dobbs. Um, wide receivers were in and out of the lineup. I don't think it's impossible. The Packers are sent, you know, Jaden Daniels, a second year player, Josh Jacobs could take some more dump offs slash could get some more run on the ground. But and I and both the tight ends are year two players now. But I don't think it's impossible. The Packers are like, you know, we kind of like having a bunch of one Bs, but let's also try to draft our one A for Jordan Love. That seems 
That would make a lot of sense to me. And so I think Dobbs has a wide range. I think he's personally overpriced for a guy I'd want like a lot of exposure to. Um, but, you know, in his good seasons, he comes down again with like 10 touchdowns. Do I think Lazard comes to life with A-Rod? I don't know. Like, Lazard is like a worse Dobbs. Um, I think he was literally last in ESPN open score, which tracks like how <laughs> how open you are when you run routes. Curtis Samuel jumping up draft boards. So is it possible Rodgers wants to like stick it to everyone and be like, no, he is a good player. Look, I'm a good GM, I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of interesting names here, but we're going to be a little bit more bold and scroll down the draft board here. Actually, I'm going to take this guy called Marshawn Lloyd because I've seen some good buzz on him and I'm done at five running backs with him. He's in the mix to be one of the first rookies off the board. Um, I think he tested well. So being done with him at RB5 and then just filling it out with wide receivers and tight ends feels good. Two more tight ends at minimum. And then maybe could go five more wide outs. So something like a two, five, 10, three. And I don't need to do that. I don't feel forced to do that because, you know, some people said I feel thin at wide out. I don't really fin feel that way. I have three likely first round picks in the upcoming year. And then two steady veterans in big Mike and Lockett. Um, so I feel actually pretty strong at wide out, but I'm going to add five darts just to fill it out. Colin Reed a one B. I mean, like, I mean, he's like a Debo Samuel light. Yeah. Josh Palmer is, is who I was going to go, but Lloyd just felt too good to pass up because I mean, I guess Josh Palmer's like the de facto wideout one at the moment. I'm going to get water for real this time after this pick. Really like having Kincaid on this team with me just having to like throw two darts at guys. You know, it's like, well, at least I'm not tanking my team. Lock it steady seems generous. I mean, what? Okay, he's at worst like a 10 points per game guy. If Baker falls a couple rounds, I might... Uh, just go nine wide outs and just add the stack with Big Mike just to have it. Um, I'm going to go Ricky Pearsall. Here's some good buzz on him. I think he's fringe round one, early round two, round three. Douglas is another guy I like. Going to get some water. I'll be back. Lock Lockett's a real estate agent is disrespectful. Lockett's not a real estate agent. Man's making $11 million. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of rookies at wideout. Um, 
So it could be a little slower start, but we're going to round it out with some with some vets and whatnot. MD asks, what does goaded mean? I think we're getting a mix of generations here because someone said Parham is goaded. Well, from my perspective, what it means, I'm going to take Zay Jones here um, facing charges. Well, he's still a Jaguar. <clears throat> you know, him and Gabe Davis probably are fighting each other for that deep role. But if Gabe Davis is blocking, Zay, Zay might move into that like Calvin Ridley flanker role. Um, and just adding a stack feels good. But goaded, you know, I like to be the GOAT means the greatest of all time acronym. So I guess to be goaded is mean you're really good. And that's that's it for memeing with Liam. <laughs> Let me know if you want that segment to return. A Rod might be our next vice president. No, he will not. Um, I do like though that Aaron Rodgers is like, I want to remove all distractions in the locker room, and then has like two absolutely insane distractions in the media. Baby Stevie said, auto drafted a couple picks. Not a good multitasker. Yeah, I was considering Brandon Cooks. He feels like a good buy. Meme jokes will eventually be dad jokes. Found, found the boomer. <laughs> I used to be a teacher, and so when I was um, when I was teaching, like dabbing was like really in with the kids, and I would just like tell that I would just make stuff up with the kids. I was like, oh yeah, when I was a kid, dabbing was like this, and they're like, no, it's not. No, it's not, Mr. Murphy. Recapping the team so far, we got Kyler and Trevor. Bijan, Etienne, Ramondre, Jerome Ford, and Marshawn Lloyd. Marvin Harrison Jr., Mike Evans, Rome Adunze, Adunze. Tyler Lockett, Lad McConkey, Ricky Pearsall, Zay Jones. And then Dalton Kin Cade. What grade did you teach? K through fourth. I taught them all. I thought Cooks was arbitrage Higgins Devonta Waddle last year, swinging a miss. Yeah, that's not quite. He's more like a souped up. I mean, he actually had like a decent second half. Oh, Rashad Bateman just st staring at me. The thing I was going to say about Burks earlier is a lot of people think Burks' natural role is in the slot. Um, and so he's going to be able to move there. I, however, am... I mean, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Adam Thielen. The man had 180 fantasy points. It was objectively good. Yes, Deontay Johnson is there, but when you got four rookies adding an old like Adam Thielen 30 picks after costs uh seems good free T Higgins please where, where do you guys want T Higgins to be traded to I do not think T Higgins is good enough and I said this after like I watched that Super Bowl run of the Bengals and I said this guy's gonna get way over drafted he's just not that good T Higgins um like he's a good player but I think, you know, if T. Higgins didn't play with Joe Burrow, the excitement's not there, in my opinion. So I think he's a bit overrated for what he is. Dealing his red zone target if they get there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a little bit of box score chasing with Thielen, but I mean, it was a pretty good box score to chase, right? Like, if he's going to be a 16th round cost and going after Wandale Robinson and Jalen Hyatt just, like, darts at the Giants wide out receiver room. Seems good. 
if he's only a first half of the season guy, that seems fine too for my team. I don't want like a huge bag on Thielen. Um, but I think you can do worse in the 16th. Keaton Mitchell. I'm like, this is a this is a fun swing upside, 16th, 17th, going Bateman and Burks. Like, if one of them hits, you're stoked. Really tough to draft Waller with like the rumors he might just retire. Man, Titan Titan's so gross. I might be might be doing four as is. Noah Brown goes. I was going to take him. What are like a lot of guys that you can smidge and see it? OBJ, free agent. I didn't say that. My free agency roundup. Fuck it. Greg Dorch. He's a stack. It's kind of like seeing what tight ends make it back to me. If Marvin Harrison is a foul, is a Cardinal, I mean, that's like really fun as a Cardinals fan. Kyler to him. You got Dorch in the slot, probably. Michael Wilson outside, who showed something. He's a pretty good price, in my opinion, too. Davis Allen. I think that Davis Allen's a pretty fun swing at tight end. Jermaine Burton. Haven't heard that name a lot. I mean, I just like refuse to take Chig. He's like just so brutally bad. I could do another quarterback. I could do a wide receiver. There's something to like here. Yeah, I'm going to do a wide out, just like a boringness bet. In Demarcus Robinson, balance out the rookies, and then just end it with whatever tight ends make it back to me. Is there a max amount of players you stop at for one team? It really depends on the team. You have to keep in mind these are 20 rounds, so you can get a little bit more funky. A.T. Perry, I know who A.T. Perry is, brother. Yeah, he's a, he's a fine swing. So I'm happy I spent the sixth on Kincaid because it's just kind of like Nujoku I would have considered. 
Maybe going Schultz over Lockett is something I would have considered. If I could do it again, they seem like they have similar um, season-long and weekly projections. And then, other than that, like after Schultz, it's like, ugh. You know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe Michael Mayer, but maybe I should just wait and like roll the dice on whoever. So, yeah, I just kind of took some, like, I didn't need to take some of these wide outs so high, but I kind of just let people take the tight ends for me. And let's start throwing some names in here. There's no order to this. I'm just putting names I'm interested in. Maybe I shouldn't. People are drafting them. Maybe I'm help maybe I'm helping people. That's not good. I put I put the three tight ends in the queue and they all go. So I don't I don't need to queue it up. Okay. God, I might be forced to take Chigo Conquil. I might refuse. I'm going to do Tanner Hudson. I think people are going to be scared off with the Gasicki signing. And he should still be in the mix for the tight end job. Josh says, happy to donate to the prize pool with this one. All right, fam, we're wrapping this one up. Thank you to the new YouTube members, Josh, Rally, and MD. If you too want to become a YouTube member, click the join button to get access to the premium discord. If you stuck this far with me, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back on Tuesday with JJ Zacharyson to talk through some more rookies, get his perspective. Snowman says, last week I was in a draft with you. I took Chig and you said you were done taking him. It's because I did a, uh, like I did FFBC main events, which is tight and premium. And we like punted tight end and people were like, let's add Chig. I'm like, fuck Chig, man. He's Chig is awful. But I mean, he could he could have a rebound year with their options. He could be a yard after catch guy. How bad a click is Hunter Henry? He's a fine click. Um round 15, a little steep, but whatever. You know, like Conklin and Hunter Henry, these are names that are just like thrown up there. Am I going to take a share of Chig? I was just negative about him to get him to drop. It's like, it'd be really nice if I'm drafting a tight end that's like actually going to play. What's up with Jelani Woods? Fuck it. Jelani Woods, Raz God, athletic freak. Taking the tight end who has not played in the past two seasons over Chiga Conquo. You're welcome, Com. All right. So my team is Kyler and Trevor Lawrence, Bijan, ETN, Ramondre, Jerome Ford, Marsham Lloyd, Marvin Harrison Jr., Mike Evans, Rome Adunze, Tyler Lockett, Lad Nakonki. Ricky Pearsall, Zay Jones, Adam Thielen, Greg Dortch, Demarcus Robinson, Don Kincaid, Hudson, and Jelani Woods wraps up my tight end room. That is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the look at my view on the free agency and the draft. 
I'll be back on Tuesday. Peace out, guys.